community here in the north. They, are, uh, they too want to see a planning system that is fast, a planning system that gives certainty, and want to play their part in ensuring that we have one. All of them, and I emphasise that, everyone I have spoken to since my decision has been of the opinion that the planning bill as amended was not the way to do this. Or do that ends the period for listed questions. We will now move on to 15 minutes of topical questions. And I call Ms. Michaela Boyle. Ms. Boyle. Uh, can I ask the Minister for an update on the Three Rivers project in Straban? Call the Minister. Thank you for that uh, question, Ms. Boyle. It is not the first time <laughs> today I have been asked for an update on the, the Three Rivers project. Barely a day goes past that I am not asked for an update on the Three Rivers proposal. Such is the fervour in Straban and the surrounding area, and such is the desire in that area to see this proposal come to fruition. I am currently assessing the application. I am, as I have said, aware of demand in the area. I took time two months ago maybe to walk around Straban, where I spoke to shoppers and shopkeepers and was struck by the overwhelming support for this proposal. It was not unanimous, but it was overwhelming. I hope to be in a position to make a decision on this application in the not-so-distant future. However, there are some technical issues around the application that would need to be addressed. Call Ms Boyle for supplementary. Can I thank the Minister for his response? And given the high importance of this economic um, development within Straban. Can I further ask the Minister what efforts he has made in terms of trying to resolve the outstanding uh, planning issues? Well, uh, there are several outstanding planning issues, and without wanting to get into the detail of each and every individual planning issue on each and every planning application, in this chamber. I will happily meet with the member and, and, and discuss the, the application which we are currently discussing. Call Ms Rosalie McCarley for a topical question. The makes me in the election era, so it's on that at Holchershin. As the Minister knows, myself and Paul Maskey met with him a couple of weeks ago and we discussed the uh, issue of the planned application uh, in relation to Black Mountain. Can, can you give us an update on that, uh, Little? I'll go my good for Hunya and Kesh Shin. I did indeed meet with the member and the MP for West Belfast on this issue at Black Mountain. And indeed, I am sympathetic to the concerns raised at that meeting. At that stage, I was awaiting further consultation response from NIEA, or sorry, the National Trust, which I do not believe the Department has received yet. I will pursue this, and if it is in, I will get back to the member, and if it is not, I will chase it to see where it is. Call Ms. McCarley for supplementary. Can the minister um, um, assure me that the, the concerns of the local residents have been taken into account? Uh, in every application, planning application, the application is subject to full scrutiny and indeed the opinions and concerns of objectors are taken very seriously and taken into account. On this particular application, I am aware acutely of those concerns and indeed that they centre around health fears and so forth, as well as potential damage to an area of outstanding natural beauty that is now being 
much used by hill walkers, motor, or sorry, mountain bikers, etc. So I yes can assure the member that those concerns have been taken on board, will be taken account when a final decision is being made. Call Mr. Gregory Campbell for topical questions. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Uh, given the cross-cutting nature of road safety issues between both the Minister's Department and the Minister for Justice. Has he, any, has he had any recent discussions with the Minister for Justice on the issue of speed detection vans and their use? I thank uh, Mr Campbell for his question. I did indeed meet recently with the Minister for Justice. A lot of our work is cross-cutting, not least that on road safety. However, this very issue, that of speed detection, Fans is not something that came up during that meeting. I will happily go back to the Minister of Justice and uh, have another meeting with that on the table. It is vitally important that all departments work together in order to reduce the likelihood and incidence of road accidents. And I am determined in this role to ensure full cooperation and collaboration with others to drive down the number of driving related deaths and accidents on, this ro on our roads. Uh, Mr Campbell for supplementary. Thank you, Deputy Speaker, and I thank the Minister for that response. Uh, when he has discussions with the, the, the Minister for Justice uh, on the, the issue of road safety, would he ensure that the discussions about the use of speed detection vans uh, concentrate on the area of road safety and accident prevention? Because many people believe that it is more a case of revenue raising given where they see the repeated placing of speed detection vans in areas where there have been no accidents whatsoever and it purely appears to be a revenue-raising exercise? This is certainly an issue I will raise with the Minister, <laughs> yes, who has now joined us, and maybe you can raise it with him before I can. Uh, I am aware of that perception, public perception out there that these speed traps are there to boost revenue rather than reduce accidents. And I'm aware of a few spots within my own constituency, one not very far from the member's house, that is a particularly, <laughs> particularly profitable, one might say. I'm determined that resources should be allocated where they are needed in order to reduce accidents, not to boost the coffers. Call Mr. Sean Lynch for. Gurmai, I'll get the last can call you. Can the Minister assure us that the name Glens will not be removed from any business marketing or promotional work within the new council cluster of Causeway, Coast and Glens? Sorry, could the member repeat the question? Turbon yeah. Norm. Can the Minister assure us that the name Glens will not be removed from any business marketing or promotional work within the new council cluster of the Causeway Coast and Glens? That uh, really will, in my opinion, be a matter for the new council to, to decide. However, in terms of boosting tourism, one would imagine that the council would like to have everything in the title that will increase the number of tourists coming into the area. And while the causeway, of course, is widely recognised, one cannot understate the value to tourism of the Glens. Call Mr Lynch for supplementary. Um, go on, Quakers, uh, I uh, want to thank the Minister for his answers. And he has answered my um, supplementary by agreeing that the removal of the Glens from the new council would be detrimental. So, go on, my Ogget. Nah, Haber, eh? Don't, don't, don't mention it. But I would think if, if I can see that the removal of the Glens from the naming of initiatives in that council area could be detrimental to uh, tourism. One would only imagine that locally elected representatives and those charged with making these decisions will be all too aware of it also. 
Congress, Katrina Ruan. Gerda Margot, last can call you. Um, I wonder could, could the Minister outline the, um, how he is assisting the community and voluntary sector to participate fully in the community planning process? I spoke earlier uh, during oral questions, Mr Deputy Speaker, of the training that will be provided as part of local government reform. Well, <laughs> A lot of emphasis of this training will naturally be directed towards local government, locally elected representatives. There will also be training for the community and voluntary sector in and around the area of community planning. Community planning is a very exciting and very important part of RPA, and we need the full buy-in of communities, not just the community and voluntary sector, of communities to ensure that it works. Therefore, local councils and STCs will be charged with delivering training on a local basis. It's very important that for community planning to succeed, that it takes a bottom-up approach. In my opinion, of course, we need departments, ministers signed up and, and, and buying in to it. But for it to really succeed on the ground, we need ordinary people whose lives will be affected by it, taking a full role. Call Ms Rehan for a supplement. Um, and I wonder, would, could the Minister outline what, if he has had discussions with the DSD Minister in relation to community and voluntary sector participation, and if so, what they entailed? I am aware of that while uh, my department is charged with local government reform, other departments will be transferring functions and the Department of Social Development will be transferring the function of community development. The model to which they are transferring is different from that of my own department. Currently, I know they are transferring the budget associated with community development without transferring the staff. However, it will be up to the new councils who are taking or having these powers and functions transferred to them, they will be given the option of indeed taking on the staff from DSD who are currently performing this function on a secondment basis. Call Mr. Dominic Bradley for topic. Well, I got the last one. Call you. Are you feeling like you are a Tolus Raha at a Eran Villa con an Achtrak the Boher Alasu? Billa Wilchimer, I'm a Gortiha August Boston or Nabohira Awilu. Could I ask the Minister for an update on the status of the Road Traffic Amendment Bill, which aims to reduce deaths and injuries on our roads? Gurum Ayogut, Fahonia, and Kesh, and I will happily provide an update to the, the status. Of the, or on the status of this bill, which is an important and will play an important role in driving down carnage on our roads. The principal objective of the bill is to reduce fatal and serious injury collisions where driver or rider alcohol is a causation factor, and also to address the over representation of young drivers in fatal and serious collisions on our road. A comprehensive consultation process was carried out in the development of the policies, the drink driving consultation in 2009, the graduated driver licensing policy consultation in 2011, and the drink driving legislation consultation just last year. The original version of the paper was issued to the executive on the 15th of May this year. I understand there are competing priorities within the executive, but I hope to be in a position to introduce this important bill early in the next year. Call Mr. Bradley for supplementary. Um, can the minister tell us um, what impact he believes this bill will have on the current statistics? As I've said, one of the key aims of this bill is to tackle the over-representation of young drivers in uh, our fatal and serious road collision statistics. 
and believe that the graduated driver licensing programme that I referred to in my earlier answer plays a key role and will play a key role in this if statistics elsewhere across the globe are to be believed. This is a very important issue. I believe it will succeed in addressing road uh, accidents. It will succeed in reducing road accidents and therefore should be widely welcomed across this House. Order. Time is up. We must move on to questions to the Minister of Justice. And again, we will start with listed questions. I call Mrs. Dolores Kelly. Uh, thank you, Mr. S Deputy Speaker. Question number one, Minister. Deputy Speaker, to date, neither I nor my officials have had any discussions with or received any submissions from the Northern Ireland Commissioner for Children and Young People in relation to the proposed changes in legal aid for family law cases. The Commissioner did, however, provide a written response to the proposals for the reform of financial eligibility for civil and criminal legal aid. My officials are currently considering the responses to proposals to change civil legal aid remuneration, and I am happy to meet with the Commissioner to discuss the policy proposals. Call Mrs. Kelly for supplementary. Um, thank uh, the Minister for his answer. I'm disappointed that there hasn't yet been, but there's certainly now an invitation to meet with the Children's Commissioner. Uh, the Minister will be aware of uh, the grave concern about the impact of legal aid changes on uh, representation at family, at family law courts. So would I, I ask the Minister then, will he take on board the concerns raised uh, by the Children's Law Society and others in relation to uh, the reduced uh, budget potential uh, uh, for representation at such hearings? Well, Deputy Speaker, I can certainly assure Mrs Kelly that we will take on board all the representations received, including those from the Children's Law Centre, but members will be aware of the difficult financial circumstances we are in, the necessity of ensuring that we bring legal aid expenditure within budget without reducing the scope of legal aid, and that remains my in intention. Call Mr Sean Lynch. Good uh, last can call you. Can the Minister be satisfied that the proposed cuts to the legal aid budget for family law matters will not have negative impact on vulnerable children? Well, certainly, uh, Deputy Speaker, I have done my best to ensure that we will not see any cuts uh, which would affect the rights of uh, vulnerable claimants, whether they be children or others. Uh, that's part of the issue which, where we're looking at in terms of the review of the access to justice, looking at the needs of children and young people in particular. But I repeat the point I've just made to Mrs Kelly. There are very difficult financial circumstances, and we are maintaining the scope of legal aid significantly wider than it is in England and Wales. Call Mr Robin Swan. Thank you very much, Mr Deputy Speaker. Does the Minister accept, in the cases of implacable hostility, a parent may need the protection of the court to maintain a relationship with their child, and will legal aid still be available in these cases? Well, the answer, Deputy Speaker, is yes, I do accept that vulnerable parents may need legal aid and legal aid will continue to be available. What we have to do is ensure that the appropriate level of representation is provided, and I remain to be convinced that it is always necessary to provide the level of representation which is currently provided. Frequently, a solicitor would be capable of handling a case where, at the moment, uh, a junior barrister may be funded, a junior barrister may be capable of handling a case where currently a QC is funded. Call Mr Jim Allister. Has the Minister met with any solicitors? who are deeply exercised by his proposals in respect of particularly civil legal aid, uh, and many of whom have been lobbying members of this House. How many times has the Minister met with such solicitors to, to hear and to understand the concerns that they have? Well, Deputy Speaker, I attended a meeting convened by the Law Society some weeks ago, at which a very large number of solicitors were present. I have also met officers of the Law Society. I do not think it would be possible, given the number of firms of solicitors in this jurisdiction, for me to meet each of those individuals who has written either to the Department or to individual MLAs. <coughs> Mr Leslie Cree. Question two. Deputy Speaker, the Northern Ireland Prison Service has evaluated millimetre wave scanners within the prison environment and has sought to obtain the necessary licences and approvals to pilot transmission X-ray body scanning technology within our prisons. In accordance with the Justification of Practices legislation, the required justification application was lodged with the Department of Energy and Climate Change in May. The process must now be completed by Chris Grayling, the Secretary of State for Justice, following consideration by the Justification Liaison Group. All of this is outside the control of my officials. 
While I remain determined to reduce the level of personal intrusion which is inherent within existing search pro procedures, any new solution must, as a minimum, perform at least as well as existing methods. Ultimately, nothing should be done that will compromise the safety of everyone within our prisons. Call Mr. Cree for supplementary. Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. The Minister for his response, which is it's interesting. Minister, I wonder, and I understand the difficulties that you're having, is there any alternative technology which could be used uh, that would eliminate the requirement for full body searches? Well, at this stage, Deputy Speaker, I can inform Mr. Cree for, to what is a fair supplementary question that the only two technologies which have been assessed as in any way possibly suitable were the millimetre wave scanners which we have trialled and were found not to be suitable and the transmission x-ray scanners for which we are seeking uh, the justification approval. The reality is even were they to be successful they would not remove completely the need for full body searching if for example they were to identify that something was secreted it would then be a requirement to have that full body search. But there is, as I am aware at this stage, no other technology beyond those two, although we keep in touch with developments worldwide. Call Mr. Pat Ramsey. <clears throat> Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Could I ask the Minister, given it is a, a most emotive subject matter and the concerns with that, and accepting there are statutory requirements in relation to the scanners, has there been any independent assessment or evaluation carried out into the suitability of these full body scanners? Well, I, again, I appreciate Mr. Ramsey's point. The reality is that the Northern Ireland Prison Service is at the forefront within these islands of looking at this particular technology. It is in use in airports, but it is not in use in any uh, prison or similar facility uh, anywhere in these islands. That is why we're having to go through the detail of the justification application, and that is why the matters are technically out of our hands at the moment. We simply await to see what the response to that application is. Call Mr. Raymond McCartney. Uh, can I thank you, uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, and indeed thank the Minister for his answers. But given the timescale that we are now involved in this process seeking uh, a licence, uh, is the Minister satisfied that the proper urgency is being provided, or is this a case of people not really wanting to do this and, and looking ways to try and just slow it down? Well, I, I can't give Mr McCartney the assurances as to what processes are entirely being applied by DEC, but what I can say is that meetings have been held, prison service staff have been at them. We have done our best to push forward that this is an important and urgent issue for us. But clearly there is a major issue about a completely new technology being used within prisons, and it's only right that that should be subjected to proper assessments on health grounds. Call Mr Cahill of Washington. Well, uh, question three. Question three. Mr Deputy Speaker, there is very positive ongoing cooperation between the various criminal justice agencies across the two jurisdictions. This reveals itself most notably through the six project advisory groups covering public protection, managing offenders, forensic science, victims and witnesses, youth justice and criminal justice and social diversity. Cooperation is developing further in areas including work to speed up justice by sharing best practice on the production of short or fast track reports for courts the drafting and development of a Forensic Partnership Strategy and Action Plan, which covers the forensic science services of Northern Ireland, Ireland and Scotland, the holding of a cross-border hate crime seminar, ongoing discussions on the European Victims Directive, development of an information sharing agreement between the PSNI and Angada Shikana relating to domestic and child abuse, and development of a protocol between the juvenile justice centres in Northern Ireland and Ireland. Call Mr Oshin for supplementary. Uh, could the Minister give an update on the All Ireland approach to dealing with uh, human trafficking? Well, the issue of human trafficking, you would appreciate, Deputy Speaker, is one uh, which, as I will be announcing shortly in my statement on the, uh, the North South meeting, uh, is a matter of key concern in both jurisdictions. It's an issue where we see joined up working between Angada Shikana and the PSNI in particular, and through the involvement of Angada Shikana in the Organised Crime Task Force subgroup on human trafficking. Uh, back in October, uh, Alan Shatter's Minister of Justice and Equality and I uh, opened and co-hosted a cross-border forum on human trafficking to uh, enable the various agencies to identify the challenges and seek cooperative solutions. And we're looking currently at a number of bids for EU funding in respect of the education around trafficking and of meeting the needs of victims. 
So they are all matters which are of considerable concern to a number of agencies north-south and on which the two of us as ministers continue to discuss regularly. I'll call Mr Paul Given. Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Given the importance of cross-border cooperation,